I always hated that motherfucker who <laughs> fucking. <laughs> I thought you were talking about him. I was like, damn. Okay. Not Bob Barker. I always hated that that one guy that would fucking bet a dollar and then win. I'd be like, look at that asshole. And then he wins. Or that one person that would fucking play and they're like, oh, $100. $102. And it's like, you motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah, the the guy next to him just looking at him like, you fucking piece of shit. (laughs) I'd fucking fight on that show. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine the Price is Right probably caused a lot of divorces. <laughs> Better family feud. Yeah, oh, rest man. in peace, Bob yeah. Barker. <laughs> <laughs> is it because they handed out too many recliners and then the guys didn't want to get up and do anything once they got their free recliner? Right. Yep. They, they wanted to make the most out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I won this. I got to use it. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a genuine award. <laughs> I won this. Fragile. Fragile. Uh, Must be Italian. (laughs) My dad was an Oldsmobile man. I love that movie. I think we even used that as a cut in on one of our one of our videos. It's like you could but he he could weave a a tapestry of cuss words or whatever. I I loved how he worded all of that. Scully hanging out in the custom couple lounge. No, still, that's the front room. That's not <laughs> this room. We still don't have the custom couple lounge. We've been working on that for two years. Moving boxes around from one spot to another. Yeah, it's great. It's going great. I did that again today. <laughs> it adds to the mid-century charm, all the uh, U-Haul boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the original U-Haul boxes. We even we even asked U-Haul if they had anything from the 1960s. So, like, we're that authentic. They, they are uh, estate sales. They typically have them. Yeah, that's all we wanted was that's the box. We don't want anything that was in the box. We just want the box itself. That's it. Dump all the shit out of it. <laughs> Resell it. <laughs> Repurpose. I don't even remember I'm the last time. I'm admiring all the blown glass. I thought they were bongs. I thought you guys were really into smoking weed. <laughs> but I wish I were government. I don't get that fucking pleasure. <laughs> hey, Todd, check this out. There you go. Now Todd's happy. Yeah, now Todd's happy. Like, now it starts. No, that one was the scariest one I ever had to transport. I was like, I dropped this. It's fucking over. Like, I'm just going to cry. Yeah, that, that that blown glass right there is taller than our eight-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, it's taller than me. <laughs> and I'm 46. <laughs> yeah, I'm 46. Yeah. See, I'm telling you, after 40, everything goes. I don't even... <laughs> Does it even matter anymore? <laughs> you just stop counting at yeah, that point. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Does not matter. It's funny. I've been uh, I've been posting all throughout the week. Well, actually, since the first of February, I've been posting about. He's that birth 40. month person. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's my birth month. It really, I'm never like I I, I don't do that. But uh, I made it a point to make like an affirmation every day. Rob calls me today, and he's like. Are, are you seeking attention right now? Like, why are you doing this? And I was like, well, for one, because our algorithm's way off and I need to make a post every day. But number two, I'm stoked, man. 40? Like, I made it that far? I wasn't planning on 27. Yeah. 40's uh, exciting until you're 40. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I'm, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, like, like we are just talking. Everything goes. What, after uh, six months... Good luck. If your knee's not popping right now, it will be. Oh, I skated my whole fucking. That's the car life. warranty that it wore off <laughs> yeah. finally, and now you got all these fucking problems coming up. It's like yeah, okay, the extended warranty's up also. You need the extended extended warranty. <laughs> yeah, I have insurance, and they still look at me funny. Like, uh, probably shouldn't. Yeah, we you need a second opinion to get the uh, the cheap rates on your deductible. Huh? Yeah, it's like, hey, I need to go to the doctor. It's like, well, you know, we could save that for somebody healthier. <laughs> You're tying up a room. <laughs> You're on down the road, old man. It is what it is with you right now. Right. It's like, did you check into hospice? <laughs> they got a gown and no underwear for you. It's all right, though. It is all right. So y'all have your your car show coming up and rally in the alley that hasn't happened in a while, so right like this is this is what, a couple years now that y'all have not done that show. Uh, so 
we did it last year. Oh, you did do it last year. Yeah, we. This is uh, this is number eleven for us. COVID hit, and um, so we we do our show in the first month of March every year. Right. So twenty twenty, it went off, and then everything shut down. So we were kind of like the only show in Houston that year, and then everything shut down, and it was like everything's done, everything stopped, everything went away. And uh, slowly started coming back, and we're at a point where it was like, well, shit, do we even pick it up again and start going? And uh, so we decided, yeah, uh, last year we we found a, a spot that was really convenient at Back Pew Brewery out there in Houston. Uh, the guys were real easy to deal with, um, great guys, all blue-collar, working-class guys, old cars, so... Went and talked to them, and they were into it, and it was just real easy and natural, you know, where uh, they wanted us. We wanted to be there. We had great turnout, and uh, so that was number 10. We were like, we, we got to at least hit 10. Uh, we, we built it up. We've been through several different venues. Well, not several, but a, a couple different venues, and um, just wanted to keep it rolling. So it's like we had such a good response last year, just – had to get back into it and get get these guys going um houston's got a uh a good car scene everybody's pretty tight all, all the car clubs um we genuinely know all each other you know we know each other from everywhere you know around houston so it's uh everybody gets along and, and it's good so we want to keep it going and just get everybody out to show off what they've been working on and um you know, leak oil all over the place, really. Hell yeah. I know if Sam drives anywhere, it's oil, fuel, transmission fluid. That's a damn fluid. lie. <laughs> Trans- Don't you talk <laughs> shit about him. This is why he doesn't like you, and he doesn't yeah. like other guys that talk <laughs> shit about him. It's just a transmission leak, okay? And it's not that bad. But you can find me because you can just follow it, so yeah, that's fine. Her it's car like wants, <laughs> it like leaves a, a trail of breadcrumbs everywhere it goes. Like You can find her. Uh or you it can just, just hear doesn't it. like me though. No, uh, it doesn't like men. any man. Her car is a dude. Because all of y'all call it a girl, and it's not a girl; it's a guy. Like yeah. my car's car is a dude. Her <laughs> car is a dude, and uh, any man that has worked on that car comes off injured. Yep. Uh, it's got a curse. They, they go away with a, a lamp It's like and Christine, like, but it's Christian. <laughs> yeah, Christopher out there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Johnny. Johnny Plummer, uh, he got a bunch of shit blown into his eye trying to work on the fucking Rust. airbag system. Rust. Rust. Just right into the eyeball. Uh, Brian busted his knuckles on it. That, and hit his head. Uh, yeah, he hit his head on it. <laughs> cut, his, cut his forehead open. Um, when we were fixing the starter on it, uh, I was filming. I busted my lip open. I turned off the camera, and I threw the starter solenoid across the garage. It's like this is the, not my day, but that car has just never liked anybody touching it. And then she gets in it, fucking starts right up. She drive it on no fluids, no gas, no <laughs> nothing at all. It fuck it, it'll go down the street. It loves her to death. Oh yeah, but I mean none after of you're us. after you're done working on it, then you're like it doesn't fucking start. I was like, give me like five seconds, it'll turn on. Turns on like nothing. Mm. So we go and do burnouts in the driveway after this. Or <laughs> I mean, we could. We yeah, we totally could. <laughs> If you can get that two speed to do a burnout, I fucking love it. <laughs> I would love it. But uh but yeah, y'all got y'all got this going. Uh, the last rally that I went to, Delta Bombers played it and it was, it was Delta Bombers and Rosie Flores. I think was uh, the two music acts. So that was a while ago. That was like 14 or 15. Yes, yes, yes. That's been a uh, been a long time. Yeah. So I we I think we're making this one. We're going to make it out there. We may not be in a car, but we're going to at least be at the show. Right on. It's going to yeah. be a good time. Uh, March second. Yeah, March second. Mm-hmm. Back Pew Brewery. Uh, I forgot what's her name. There was a a woman. I'm going to look at my messages now because she's. I feel she messaged me about it, asking me. She's like, "Are y'all going to make it out?" I was like, "Yeah, we probably are, honestly, because we know everybody out there." I forgot. Oh, to come do the shootout. Yeah. Yeah, so last year we had uh, some friends help us out from the um, 
the pinup scene out in Houston, and they did like a little shootout. They invited some photographers out and uh, models, and they just basically ran around, took pictures with cars and stuff. So uh, our friend Mandy from the Rebel Bellas, she's coming yep. out. She put it together. Uh, all the f photographers confirmed. All the models confirmed, except for one. Why is that? You know what? She messaged me when I was like not feeling the greatest, and I haven't messaged her back. And I was like, "Fuck, I don't know uh -huh. how to." Like, I'm the worst person when I know I have to message somebody. I'm like, "Oh, I don't know how to go about this," because now I'm a dick. <laughs> like, it's just really bad. But yes, I know she has mentioned it. We haven't talked about it yet. I haven't even discussed it with him yet. And I was like, ah, "We need to make an appearance." You want to see Sam hit, like, anxiety level? Make her call somebody. <laughs> oh, God. Don't do that. Like, I'm getting hot right now just talking about it. I'm like, Jesus, I'm sweating. If she has to call somebody and like talk it. to them on the phone. I don't do is, it. Mm -mm. She is sweating. Mm -mm. That's why when people meet me, they don't understand. They're like, they're like, you just look so cool. And then they meet me and they're like, oh, my God, she talks really fucking fast. I'm like, it's the anxiety. It's not because I'm cool. It's because I'm fucking freaking out. Text only? <laughs> yep. You get their phone number and just text them across the room. Exactly. And, and then it's all cool. You can kind yep. of chill out a little uh, bit. She could sit right there next to you on the couch and text you. <laughs> I can text books. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. This Make is why we don't people. do the interviews with people. Because, look, you see me fidgeting right now. I'm like, nope. I got to pay attention to something else. I don't listen to our episodes. I don't talk about that. Like, no. I don't do any of that. <laughs> the TV's off. She's watching it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she sees something going on over there. You want me to go sit in the bathroom? <laughs> I mean, you guys got windows. <laughs> I was taking a poop and kind of seeing what was going on. Isn't in here. I felt like I was part of the conversation still. We can open a window. It's even better when you're six three and you can look out the window like eye level with the with the backyard and wave at people. Oh my god! Yeah, there you go. Like you're talking uh, about drinking coffee and just hanging your piece on the uh, window seal for the neighbors. Yeah, so you hang the coffee off of it. It depends on what time in the morning it is, though. So. There you go. That, that's got to be a small mug. <laughs> <laughs> he got me, folks. He got me. Anyways. So, the last show, uh, the uh, the one that we, we went out and saw you. Just tripping. Just tripping. How'd that show go? Like, have y'all wanted to do those again? Uh. Yeah, so that's not an official uh, club event, but one of uh, the cats from Houston was putting on Just Trippin'. Um, they're into the older, uh, like, 60s, 70s style choppers and stuff, and they, there's a group of guys around Houston that, that do it, and um, they, they put together some pretty cool shows. They would try to get together, um, like, swap meets and stuff, and, and just get out there and... and just give people something to do really you know yeah. um some of our friends at uh destroyer garage and uh they're putting together a show called nitty gritty chopper city so yeah i've been following that one on instagram uh destroyer he goes live and walks through the shop and shit showing off all the customers bikes and everything i was like is that for sale is that for sale like yeah there's he, some rad shit he built in there. some cool stuff and he's built up that show quite a bit and um you know so they kind of helped out with uh, just tripping a little bit, and um, they've done a couple of those. Um, I think they're looking at like some different venues and stuff, so it, it's up in the air right now. But uh, you know, check those guys out too. Just tripping. Um, they, they've always got cool stuff coming up. How'd you get in the Rumble Cats? Uh, Were you in it before you moved to Texas? No. So uh, the Rumble Cats started out in L.A. out in SoCal, and uh, I grew up in SoCal, but I didn't know any of these guys. Basically, because I, I live in SoCal, so I didn't have any money for an old car. <laughs> uh, for real. Moved out to Houston, could finally afford something, you know, and um, it, it was funny. I was working on the road, and uh, I told my wife, hey, I need to get a car, you know, and uh, or if I don't get a car off this one, then we're not doing something right with our money. She called me like a week later, hey, I found this car for you. Come check it out. And so I came down, found the car, and uh, started driving around, and... Basically, you know Rooster, right? Blue Rooster from mm -hmm. uh, San Antonio chapter. He does all the lowbrow art. and We found him, and he started posting stuff. So I started following him and then hitting shows here and there. And I was like, these are the guys that uh, I want to be a part of. I like their uh, the stuff they got going on, type of cars they got. Uh, 
you know, nothing's real pretty, but it's all fucking fast, you know? Yeah. So it, I got hooked up with them and um, basically, you know, stalked them at first. And then I uh, <laughs> actually got along with these guys really well. So it's, you know, a great brotherhood. I was just actually uh, hanging out with Preacher, part of our, our San Antonio chapter. And uh, one of our SoCal guys was out there. We had a handful of people from Houston out here earlier. So it, it's cool. It's always good to get in uh get some FaceTime with all the brothers and stuff it's yeah for sure it's cool and uh I mean the Houston car scene like I was saying it, it's small but uh everybody's real tight-knit and we we can show up anywhere and have a good time you know there, there's never anybody looking over their back so if if anybody wants to come out and like be a part of like a good fun car scene Houston's always a fucking good time it's south side north side where, wherever you go if you see any shows come up Wise guys got a coffee and cars on the south side of Houston. Yeah, monthly. Um, yeah, our buddy Henry's posting that yeah. one constantly. Dude's fucking rad. Yeah, yeah. The uh, so they they got some cool cars. They get together. You know, Lone Star Deluxe down there. That, that that's the one in uh, Texas City. Yeah, that that one's always decent. And it always falls in close to like when they have like their big crawfish festival too. Uh, I went out there for one and it same day as the car show they had a big crawfish festival going on right like in the same vicinity so like that place was packed with people and we had a blast i i probably ate about five pounds of crawfish that day <laughs> then had to drive back to san antonio and just like hating life hopefully you don't <laughs> shit your pants <laughs> hoping uh, yeah. on the spicy side. it gets worse after your 40s apparently <laughs> apparently so <laughs> Hey, I, I got a broken latch on the gate, so I can't, you know, miss that exit. I got to I gotta get off. You know, I, I realized this week that adding extra hot sauce to anything is not a good idea. So, oh, well. Welcome to 40. <laughs> yeah, good luck with all that. Yeah. Well, I, I had problems with the guts before then, so I can't even imagine what the hell 40 is going to do to me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, just light the fuse and uh, hopefully you make it home before it goes off. So we're going to have to move out of San Antonio. That's what's, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, just like don't go anywhere during the show. Mayonnaise is going to be too spicy. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite things on the, the channel that we did when we put up trigger warnings on the channel. It's like, a, you know, if mayonnaise is too spicy for you, then this content probably is not your thing, you know. It's probably one of my favorites, but uh, Hell yeah, shit, hey, I'm yeah. glad to see you guys are back. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, the custom couple back in action um, with world class uh, guests and mind blowing <laughs> topics. Absolutely. If you're uh, asleep we, we right now, my please wake the that, fuck uh, up. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, it, it it's a good thing that that we're gonna start doing this up again because uh, you know, we had a lot to to get into this year for a lot of car shows are happening this year a lot of uh traveling and events and you know it's like we need to be covering all this because for one print media is going away right, uh, right you know there's not a whole lot of people out there covering any of you know anything cool uh, most of the youtube channels that we've come across it's just people working in their own garage so it's like man we need to get out and like start covering events and seeing what's going on in somebody else's backyard and not focusing so much on what's going on here but you know hey we're you know we're planning on uh hitting kansas this year we're planning on hitting uh missouri missouri go up to st louis and see our friends up there and uh you know there's just so many people that it's like they they created their whole youtube channel because of covid so the, everything is based out of their own garage and it's like man let's get out to the world that's what we were doing before and everybody loved it so we're gonna start doing that shit again i think uh i think uh rally in the alley is gonna be our, our first one that we actually get out mm -hmm. and shoot some video for the podcast so everything we've done with the podcast so far is like audio only like there's no visually anything you know for it but uh yeah we, we'll come out and we'll we'll hit hit that show with some gopros and start showing people what's up and then hey fucking promote for next year man good deal i we, we appreciate you guys coming out we uh appreciate the support 
you know, it's always good to see you guys. I think what, what was the last time we saw you guys at the uh, Lord's Car show out here, in San mm-hmm. Antonio? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was a rad show. So I mean, just. That's the type of feel we like to go for, just like a backyard, like everybody just bring what you got, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, The show's 68 and uh, older, which, uh, I mean, we we try to exclude the muscle car type deal just because we we go for the custom car sold type stuff, uh, pre-war, all the old 30s guys, you know, with with their... uh, Flatheads that get coming in just rowdy as fuck. Um, th- it's cool to see all that stuff. So that that's what our show's geared towards. Um, sure. So, so you see a lot of uh, cool custom paint jobs. Um, just like you're saying, stuff that people built in their garage, and er- everybody drives it. There's no trailers out in the parking lot. Absolutely. Uh, so bring your trailer. <laughs> and the one we don't have. Yeah, that works. Yeah, we don't have a trailer either. Oh, uh, no, and I, I dig the hell out of that, man. But we just need, like, 18,000 gallons of transmission fluid, and I can make it. I know it. I know <laughs> just it. need a Absolutely. fuckload of transmission fluid. You need to hook up an IV to it. <laughs> an IV is exactly. a slow drip. You know passenger you know seat know with a, a funnel slow and a, and a long It is a slow drip. He is so dramatic about it. He's like, oh, it dumped everything. I'm like, you know what? Well, it sat there for, like, a month, so I know it's going to be empty. But I'm like, you know, I just know my car. I know when he's fine, and I know when he's good. He's like, you need this. I'm like, no, it's fine. You just need a little bit of this, and we're good. And he drives great. I just know. I just know. So what do you actually do to it to get it to start? I tell him I love him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's it? A little TLC? Yeah, just right. TLC. I'm like, I'm like, don't listen to these fuckers. I was like, you're fine, baby. And then the it's, whole time. It's exactly like that scene in Christine. He's like, come on. It's okay. No, She's gone no, now. No, I do that. No, he fucking, whenever like he couldn't get it started to get it moved out of the garage, he's like, you need to go start your fucking car. And I was like, okay. And he's already like pissed off because he's trying to get it to start. And I can hear it. I'm like, nope, you're pissing him off. You're not doing it right. I know you're not. And I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. I started bam. Damn, like nothing. I'm like, see, you see, he don't like you. He don't it, like any it, guy. That's exactly it. Cause I mean, I do everything by the book, you know. And he doesn't go by the book. He does not. <laughs> he does not. And I'm sitting there going, "You're gonna flood that carburetor." <laughs> oh, you motherfucker! You just don't like me. <sighs> oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, planning on making it out to the uh, the Lone Star Roundup this year? Yes. Yes, the roundup's always a good time. You know, there's so much shit going on in Austin. So, uh, I mean, how many cars are out there? Usually like 1,500 cars, 1,200 cars? Mm-hmm. I, one year, Crazy. I think they did count over two grand. Damn. Yeah. I, there's been a few years that we didn't even make it to see everything. Like, we walked about four or five rows and went to go see the swap meet and then walked another like five or six rows and it's like we're tired we're done we're (laughs) in there we didn't even see everything like they had things all the way out to the fence and almost into the road like there's been a few years that it got packed out there right you can walk as fast as you can through the entire thing and still not see it all in a day Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then everybody loads down comes in the next day and you're like shit i gotta do it again yeah because new stuff shows up on saturday like you know people that didn't come out on friday now they're out on saturday and there's a whole another batch of people right yeah absolutely uh that was like when we went to kentucky right what show was that beatersville beatersville they fucking had rows and rows and rows of cars and we could not get through all of them and they're like oh there's more tomorrow i'm like fuck i didn't even see all of them the ones that they had today like it was just it was a badass like place where they and then they were like next to like an old abandoned factory so they're like go down there because that's where all the fucking like modified ones are i'm like oh we got to go see that it was fucking it was amazing but it hurt so bad because we were just walking around and around yeah, and around. she was all done up like normal because <laughs> she was competing that day so she's walking in heels and you know all done up all and taking, everything smiling waving yep. yeah shaking babies kissing hands mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we were just walking and walking and walking. Have you ever made it out to uh, Invasion? Yeah, Invasion's, mm-hmm. Invasion's a blast. I, we love Invasion. That's one of our favorites. Uh, Beatersville is kind of kind of like uh, Louisville's version of Invasion. Mm-hmm. Okay. So everything's out in the streets. 
like they closed down the streets in that area of downtown and that's where everybody's parking so like it's just it's streets. like 10 blocks i think yeah, or 12 it's, it's blocks a bunch of like you like little nooks and crannies every where corner you go around yep. something different mm-hmm. yeah, and i mean there's cars parked all the way across the street and then a vendor will be on this corner and more cars and then it's wild i mean it is packed to the brim and you will not see everything in one one go around like it just and the same thing they have the one venue that's like blasting ac so everyone goes and hides in there because it's so fucking hot yeah the sun yeah oh yeah because it's in it's in may it's memorial day weekend beatersville is uh memorial day weekend it's hot as balls <laughs> <laughs> yeah my bald ass head i gotta find that ac venue, you know what I'm yeah saying? it good, only takes so much or a good hat what is what is uh what is on your skull man like what is That's what you got a, tattooed on there it's a mermaid the mermaid so yeah it was funny that uh you know i, I do industrial construction so i hit this job where uh i had to shave my beard i had to be clean shaven so I always shave my head and have a beard, and then once I had to shave my my beard, I was nothing but eyebrows, you know. <laughs> my yeah, my kids wouldn't even hug me. They were like, ah, it was this creepy guy, you know. And so I decided I'm gonna grow a comb over. And uh, she, the wife, it wasn't really digging. Yeah, that. she immediately started no. shaking her head when <laughs> you said that. She's like, yeah. nope. I, I told her I'm gonna tattoo my head. She's like, don't do that. I was like, right, I'm growing a comb over, and uh, it. It started growing out and went to the barber, threw a hard part in it, had it faded up, and it, it was tight. And she was laughing at me. And then, <laughs> then it got real long. And uh, I'd wake up in the morning, the thing would be sticking up like a peacock. And she was like, just go tattoo your head. And like, what are you doing? And, uh, it, yeah, I went and sat down for about five and a half hours on that thing. And No shit. Yeah. It, it didn't bleed as much as I thought it would. You know, I, dude, he's got his dome tattooed. It's <laughs> fucking wild. Our buddy Azrael went and got his dome all tattooed up, and it I can't even imagine. He comes to town every now and then. he's out at sea. He comes back into town and goes. Is he in gonna for hear this? He's session. not gonna hear this, right? I may, I, maybe I'll send it to him. Maybe I'll be like, "Hey, Azrael." Like, yeah. You know, I met Sounds Azrael. Like just, just real quick. I met Azrael when he like had his like nice slick back hair, and he was just like, he was a nice. He looked like a nice gentleman. Now he looks like a fucking thug. I'm like, what happened? Like, who pissed He's you off? He's it up. Somebody looks, got a hold of him. He off. just looks so fucking mean. I'm like, Jesus. And then you hear him yeah. talk, and you're like, wait a minute, that don't add up with how you look. <laughs> Because oh, he's Azrael. just a friendly, he's like golden retriever nice. Like, you just, yeah, everybody loves him, but he looks so fucking scary now. And I'm like, it doesn't add up. <laughs> <It just doesn't. laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Azrael's one of the, like, the nicest guys you ever talk to in, in the world. And knowledgeable about everything. Mm-hmm. Like, everything. Like, he has some kind of knowledge about it. It's fucking wild. But uh, he was actually even on our podcast when we first moved into the house. And But, yeah, he got his dome all done up. And I was like, man. That's wild. I I I haven't gone that that crazy. Yet. Don't do it. Don't do it. You have nice hair. Don't do it. <laughs> For oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> if I had hair, trust me, I'd be combing it up. But if uh, I let it go, it just looks like a clown afro. You know what I'm saying? Like the sides get real poofy, and there's just nothing on top. So I had to do something. And, you know, I gotta save face out in public. <laughs> Scully's getting a, a job offering with Slipknot. <laughs> I don't even need a mask. I like it. Yeah, I'll fit right in with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but hey, no, I, I don't hey, think so I'll go that So you guys went out to uh, Shindig the other, was it last year or the year before? Yes. Uh, evil, evil Shindig? Yeah, yeah Evil Shindig. She, she How'd you won like it? All, of the, all of the pinnacle I pissed contest. off so many people. She won the whole show? I won the you whole show. You won the show. weekend? I won the whole fucking thing. Well, okay, so the first... <laughs> Like, I pissed off a lot of people. A lot. And he that's why he's shaking his head, because he knows I did. It was my first year competing. I was one of the only girls that drove the farthest, because I was, uh, like, usually a lot of the girls, they're, like, Kentucky area. like, And it's all, like, an hour drive. But when they found out we drove, like, 16 hours to get there, they're like, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah. I was like, it's fun. But Wait, wait, wait. Why were they upset about that? Because, because you put in the effort? Be- <laughs> because and they just had to fucking go around the corner 
because they kept competing year after year after year and it was my first year and i won first place which is great and then i won people's choice which has never happened nobody's ever won both titles in the like the whole time nice. it's usually like oh, okay someone won first and someone won people's choice i won both i came home with two grand i pissed off a lot of fucking people <laughs> wow walked out of there with two middle fingers in the yeah, air huh? pretty much <laughs> jesus yeah peace among worlds yeah <laughs> fucking flipping Thank everybody you very much. see you later <laughs> i was just like la 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 i'm just here all happy and then like i had some girls that like have been following me for a couple years and they're like i was so nervous when you came and i was like why i was like it's just you know you just gotta smile and be nice like i don't really know i don't understand that part and after i won they just like didn't talk to me i'm like cool well, go fuck yourself too like i don't know <laughs> yeah it was glad you're here now get the fuck out yeah exactly yeah. It's like, just take your shit and leave at that uh-huh. point. I was like, okay. So, let's oh, get you out drove of- all this way? Thanks. Oh, you won everything? Get out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. No, we had a, a blast at the Shindig. Uh, we got to see hooligans. We got to see our, our hooligan family up there. And we haven't been hooligans in a while. And, and we still got accepted in. Like, you know, they were wow. like, hey, come on in. You know, like Chuck Darnell and, and Phyllis, like those those two are like some of like my favorite people in the oh, world yeah, they're incredibly uh, sweet. matt and angie mm-hmm. i mean all of them really all of them I, I swear i've not met a hooligan that i did not like and you know even after we got out of the hooligans like for them to accept us in as family still like it, it meant a lot to us but the, right. the whole show was just so amazing everybody there was super nice like just absolutely loved seeing us of course we're walking around this place with a basset hound puppy mm-hmm. and he's oh, jimmy dean yeah yep. that was <laughs> his first dean. show and he was a puppy still like he is he's still little and like i mean it, everybody just melted anywhere we walked with that dog that's how i won i'm that's just kidding probably, uh, <laughs> a little bit i mean <laughs> No, I mean, the secret's out. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's a, just a big old fat sausage and that and rude, absolutely rude. He's an asshole. Uh, whenever we record, and I'm sure nobody's hearing it right now because it's not he as started, bad. He started. He <laughs> started. But there's been a few where he's just like going to town in the other room, just yelling at us. Like you can hear it on the recordings. He's he's rude. If he's not in the middle of everything. He is barking. Hey, there you yeah. go. There you <laughs> go. He heard you talking about him. Yeah, he <laughs> heard. He heard. He, he knows I'm talking about him. But, uh, you know, we, we had a blast. We saw a ton of vendors up there that we'd only seen online. Out of everybody, we saw Dale Watson. <laughs> that yeah. was the one year he played there. That was the first year he's ever played there, and we wind up seeing him. And you're good friends with him. So he's yeah, like, oh, like, hey. I worked, oh, no. with, I worked with Dale when he had the Big T Roadhouse down here uh, outside of San Antonio. I worked with him on, on doing promotions and shows and stuff out of the Big T. And drive all the way out there to indiana and dale watson's playing i was like man i've seen you before ah. so, yeah he, he thought that was funny he's like yeah we we go here and see him for free i drove 16 hours to <laughs> ah. go see dale watson <laughs> but uh, uh yeah, yeah i went to uh shindig a year before you guys went out there and delta bombers played the friday night mm-hmm. and there was tornado sirens going off and oh, yeah it was wild it, it was cool to get out there and see, uh, you know, since it's a weekender, mm-hmm. everybody brings out all the vintage trailers. Oh, yes. I love you know, that So it, it's cool. Everyone's got their whole campground set up, uh, all the cars with the flamethrowers rolling in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they we, do that shit in the Midwest. Yeah. That, we thought that was rad. Yeah. yeah. That was the first time I ever saw it. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. I was like, I love it. It was just I feel like it was a really badass show, and with even though with everything that was going on, it was organized so well. Right. Like right, I right. wasn't running around with my head cut off trying to find everything. Like it was just such a nice flow. And then Bob, Bob and Mary, the ones that put it on, like they were so sweet. They came. Bob came and found us when we first got there, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, hey guys, like enjoy this. Go look at this. Like glad you're here. Like even when we left, like he made sure to like message us and let us know that we got home safe yeah. and stuff. But it's stuff like that that we enjoy when it's like, okay, we feel 
good leaving and coming back again to want to do it and it was just i just love that show it was so much fun wait wait, wait. you still want to go back i still want to go back i mean the i don't want middle compete. fingers when you're coming I, in i don't want to compete again all right <laughs> yeah, still go all right back. She already won, so she, uh, y'all, That's can, my rule. y'all can breathe. That's my rule. I will not compete again at a show. Once I've once I've competed once, that's it. I don't do it ever You've again. You've already conquered, huh? Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. That's it. it. Like when she won uh, Invasion, and then the next year they called her back to like you know relinquish the crown and, and mm-hmm. right. pass it on to the next one. Like that was that was fun because you got to be on stage with Stormy and just hang mm-hmm. out and cut up and it, it you know for me when she goes to shows and doesn't compete like i can breathe oh yeah he hates it, it. You if you she's competing and actually enjoy it i you know I, i'm i'm her number one it's fan. like you're competing like, too like, yep. yeah <laughs> like i'm louder than every motherfucker in there that is a, a guarantee and then i'm like watching like all the other girls go across the stage and like their dudes aren't like cheering even i'm like that's your girl we, man we, like, we won't say what show it is because then they'll know who we're talking about but there is a show i competed at where i got on stage and the girl's dude cheered louder for me than he did his own girl stop. and yeah no 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 uh, and then mm-hmm. even after the show he came Ooh, up to me like all that. smiling and trying to hug me and i was like dude your chick is right there like why are you doing this like and i looked at him like you need to fucking help me right now like you need to come talk to this dude like i realized because i would see like i see everybody i always look and for they, him they were engaged yeah engaged don't to be say married more hints, cause then we're gonna give it away of who it is like i just felt so bad i was like fuck like that says something right there but she didn't have a bat sound puppy <laughs> no she did not so there it is that's probably what it was, <laughs> that, that's, was that's the key if you want to win a pinup contest <laughs> but yeah no, like i i've always been that way like when mm-hmm. she competes like it if anybody's cheering for her louder than me i'm throwing fists <laughs> Like, <laughs> you need to calm down over there. Yeah, buddy. yeah. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what is this really all about? Fists. But no, like, I always thought that was that was how it was supposed to be. Like, you know, your girl's on stage and she's competing and wanting to win something. Right. You should be the loudest. You should be her biggest Out there supporting, fan. right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. And, and, and that's what I'm always on. Like, always. When she's competing, I'm out there in the crowd going, hey, you better fucking yell and, say <laughs> that. Now, and I'm always that time. guy. And uh, but when she does the shows where she's just like she's gone and done like MC work, like you know, like when she went. Back I don't know why people ask me to do that. I'm absolutely terrible at it. She's <laughs> like, horrible on a microphone, I, as I, y'all can hear. I'm horrible at it. But uh, you know, yeah, she'll do the text that. Like, I'm, yeah, make it sound good. Exactly. You know, you know I, I'm a little bit more relaxed in the crowd, and I'm not telling people that they cheer or die. You know, like. <laughs> Wait, why are you more relaxed in the crowd? Is it the? Because uh, I don't have to alcohol, yell. or you? you well, just... that too. You know, it's like okay, I can I can relax. I can not pay attention to anything that's going on up it's there. Yeah. Nobody Other than see- <laughs> you're behind the scenes. It's because yeah. nobody scene. sees the anxiety that I have right before I go <laughs> on. Because he's, I am the worst person at it. I will nitpick every single. I'm like, I don't want to wear this fucking outfit. Why did I choose this? And he has to hear all of it right before I hit the stage. And right when I hit it, it's like I don't remember any of it. I black out completely. And he's like, you were great. I was like, I don't remember any of it. I don't remember any of it. I just know all I know is I heard my name. I was like, woo! What happened? So there's not a, <laughs> a pinup contest at Rally in the Alley, right? <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, just gonna be yes. yeah, yeah. It's just Thank casual God. walking around, hanging out. Yes. I like that. Yeah, bring, but, bring uh, your walking around money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, they, there is quite a little pinup scene out there. So there, there's a lot of really good photographers. So see, uh, we, we tried to get them out there and um, j- just be with everybody and and. You know, shaking babies and kissing hands, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely, that they, whole backyard hangout kind of situation is rad. Yeah, the um, you know, invasion's cool. It's it's a big thing. Uh, we just went up to uh, Dallas for Dia de los Customs mm-hmm. with Los Hitters, and that was a cool show too. It was the first time we've been up there uh, to see Chewy and them. But uh, that that new spot that they had was was rad. It, they had the Parking lots filled up. There's a lot of cool cars out there. Um, 
Yeah, yeah those Chewie, are the things that we like Chewie's to hear. mad at me. He's he's Uh-oh. mad at me because uh, we still have not made it to. He has it every Dia time. It's my Muertos. birthday. Every time it's that's, the show. It's always the first weekend of November, and that's that's dedicated to Sam. Like, uh, we did it one year. We went to a show. We went to a car show, and I absolutely was miserable the whole time because I just didn't enjoy it. And I was like, ever since then, I was like, no, nope. not Chewy's, not Chewy's. No, it wasn't show. Chewy's show. We no, it wasn't. I will say it was not. It was definitely not Chewy's show. But we went to a car show, and ever since then, I was like, nope. I'm just gonna do what I want for my birthday, and that's it. I was like, I don't want to do ah, any. Right, I, I was like, you. fuck that. I'm fine. I just want to like I hang still out. Still have yet to make it to uh, to Chewy's show, and he always gives me shit. He's like, it's because you're white. You don't come to my show because you're white. It's like jerk. Mm-hmm. But I've known Chewy forever. Like we've just been like that. Like we go back and forth all the time. Right on, right on. Like, that's and, right. Uh, yeah, I I gone up and stayed at Chewy's house and you know there's uh I was I was in Dallas for work one week and that weekend was um I want to say it was either Invasion weekend or I think the Hellcats had a show and I ended up crashing at Chewy's house for the whole weekend and you know it was rad I've known that dude forever I have yet to make it to his show. I've gone up there and hung out with him in Dallas for everything else uh-huh. but his but show. That show. Yeah, uh-huh. so I think we'll try to make that happen at some point, but I can never promise that because it's always up in the air how that how that entire month goes. Right, right. So Yeah, a while back he was raffling off that vintage air, and I was like, hell yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to buy up all these tickets. I'm going to win this thing. And then I didn't, and then I was like, shit, I probably could have just bought a Dejer for what I spent on this raffle ticket. But, you know, the the thrill of being able to win something. Yeah. Oh, you know I love what I'm a saying? good raffle. I love a good raffle. Yeah, I, I, I've been fortunate. I've won uh, a few things. I won a, uh, a 53 Triumph. I just happened to buy one ticket. And, shit. Uh, yeah, this guy out in Newport Beach was raffling off. I won that thing. Um, I won a '55 Chevy in a raffle, also, and a uh, an '85 Monte Carlo. So that's what awesome. Did I yeah, win I'm from ahead. Ben's At thing? this point, I'm ahead. A '50 Ford shoebox. Yeah, I won it for what a hundred bucks. I spent. Hey, we spent a hundred bucks in raffle tickets, and she about. bought a. Sh- she basically got a shoebox. And then Ford. I won second place, which was, which was like fifty oh, yeah. bucks or something, or a hundred bucks. Raffle. Yeah, same raffle. I won. I won the car, and then I won second place, which was like a hundred bucks. And I was like, "Cool! I just basically won this for free. This is great." And then are we you Irish? Up, huh? Are you Irish? No. How are you so lucky? <laughs> Jesus. I am. I have the best luck. That's why he doesn't handle any car negotiations. It's always me. <laughs> uh, negotiating, yeah. You you show up with something this hot, yeah, yeah. I, I ain't talking. You talk. You don't to do her. luck anymore, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking dude will sell a car to her for whatever she says i'd guarantee it we mm-hmm. we've walked away with some pretty good deals mm-hmm. i think the plymouth was probably one of the best guy was selling a, a 60 plymouth and fucking had it listed for like five grand we walked out of there for like 2500 bucks yeah yeah you show off your bass hound puppy is that how you got yeah it? she shows up <laughs> everywhere with the bass hound <laughs> No, I just say hi, and they're like, oh, it's a girl. <laughs> and then they get excited. I'm like, I just want the car. Yeah, usually it goes the other way. It's <laughs> like, oh, chick showed up, and I told you five. Yeah, it's six, right? <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, but then no, she, but I'm the nitpicker. I'll go to a show or I'll go see the car. And I'm like, mm, well, I don't know about that. And then what's that right there? Like, I'll pick out every single fucking thing, and then they're like, oh, yeah, she shows <laughs> up and actually the knows the <laughs> shit, and they're like, oh, damn it. Yeah, she people just have not been able to negotiate with Sam. That's I'm not for sure. the one because I'll keep going at it. <laughs> I'll keep fucking trying oh, to match. They're my just trying to get you out of their house. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. What best. am I going to do to get this girl to leave? I'm like, you so want just, money just or not? Just cut the price. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's how it's been. That is how it's been. Hey, that works. That's, that's awesome. See, you got to wear them down. You just got to keep wearing them down. They're like, well, fuck, you already made the trip here. I see you have money. Mm-hmm. I want that money. So let's just talk. I'm like, done. I don't know why. I have a really bad habit. I'm not going to do it anymore. But whenever we would buy, like, we just got, or we've had his Merc that I got. But, like... I'll talk to these people and I'm like, oh, I can send you money and that's the down payment. And then you send me a contract, we'll sign it, and then that's mine, right? And it works every time. 
Nice. So it's not like, oh, we got to get out there right now. They'll hold the fucking car for like right, six, seven right, months. Right. I'm like, okay, it'll come home eventually. And I don't know why, but it always works. Yeah. We, I, our buddy Matt has told us a few times, like, we need to stop we're, doing we're it. retarded. <laughs> uh, because we, we've paid for cars through the mail. Through the mail. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Through the mail. Cash yeah. like money. You, oh, cash? I yeah. was like, you wrote a check? Jesus. No, we sent checks? money in cash, packages. And cash money would be like, hey, y'all want a t-shirt? And it fucking rolled up in there. It's like five grand. Like, yeah. here you go. <laughs> that's how we got and Matt okay. always gives us she's that's like you need to Lux. stop sending money through the fucking mail <laughs> that's how we got Lux we sent the down payment and then every like every other month I was like oh here's some more money oh here's the final payment and then with but his we damn. knock on wood we have not ever had any issue with it not showing well, we up where it was supposed to we did that with your Merc too I was like oh yeah I'll send you money what, what size shirt you wear and then like uh it was Mike Fall. Yeah, that was with the Buick. He had kids, so I would send Legos, and then and there'd be, like, cash. I'm like, don't let your kids just have it. There's fucking, like, two grand in there. <laughs> ah. yeah. Open the package and give them the Legos, yeah. but the rest Read is the yours. instructions. Yeah. <laughs> There's money but, in there. But, uh, yeah, it, we, we've had excellent luck, and on top of that, we've dealt with good people. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. You know, it, you think you know you never know who you're dealing with on facebook marketplace or any of that and uh you know you could send them all your money and then they say well it never showed up here i don't know what you're talking about you know right but we've we've not come across that we've dealt with some good people that's why we have addresses yeah i'll show up at your house (laughs) just show up to your house yeah i mean there are scumbags out there but you know when you start dealing with like the old car community Mm -hmm. it's a real small community you know what i'm saying like everybody kind of knows everybody and it's funny when something comes up on marketplace i'll tell my buddy like hey did you see this and be like yeah this other guy saw it too and this other guy saw it too Mm -hmm. and like someone you know ends up picking it up so it's like it's a real small community so you, you know, you show up a lot of places just with a stack of cash in your pocket, and it, you think it, it, it. This is probably sketchy in some places, but usually you get there, and everyone's just all about cars. Like, oh, hey, I'm gonna take this money, I'm gonna go buy this car. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. okay, yeah, you're actually buying that from someone else that I know over here, and then you know, oh, you got this from that guy. Oh, yeah, I knew somebody that I was friends with them that had this originally. So, you know, it's it's a real small community. You know, you think it, there's all these cars out there, but. You know, really, truly, it, everybody knows everybody in, mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah, and w- going along with that, you know, it, it's a really small community when you burn somebody. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you so you want to be shit. upstanding. Yeah. For it, sure. And uh, I've always felt like that. Like, I've always given people, like, the benefit of the doubt until they proved me wrong and i i needed right. to cut them out of the life you know but uh yeah you burn somebody like everybody knows that day because it is i mean every it's a tight-knit community right, right you know and it we've experienced that from coast to coast like you could go anywhere find the car guy and talk for about five minutes and y'all are best friends yeah yeah these, these are these are our people man like and you know, you burn somebody in Portland, Oregon, and a guy in New York will know it and sure. not not give you the time of day now. And uh, we've seen that firsthand. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the best thing about old cars. You see some guy that you don't even want to stand next to, and then uh, he sees maybe your keychain or something. You got an old car, and then he starts talking to you about cars. And the next thing you know, this is your best buddy. You, you're sitting next to him at the bar, buying him a drink, and it's. It's some random person that you would never think you would even have anything in common with. And now you'd rather hang out with this guy than anybody else in the whole place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, it, old cars really bring people together. It's cool. So I, I was very fortunate to find the, the Rumble Cats when I got out to Houston. Like, uh, I didn't know anybody. You know, we moved out there because it was cheap. And uh, they, they have really... Uh, brought me in and like it, it's a brotherhood right like these these are my my true friends i can treat these guys exactly like brothers you know we, we fight and talk shit like brothers but at the end of the day it's we got each other's back and there's nobody else that's going to be uh there for us before these guys you know so i uh, i really appreciate these guys bringing me in and uh you know allowing me to be a part of their their club and 
it's been around for a long time. We're getting ready to celebrate our 30 year anniversary in a couple of years. So it's, you know, it's a big thing. So it, it's something uh, bigger than myself that, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of. So when uh, rally kind of went down after uh, 2020, it's like, dude, we got to bring this thing back. We got to get it going. We got to get it, it dialed in. So it's, just so for us because we like doing it and the car scene out in Houston you know it, yeah. just to give people something to do get your stuff out and and cruise you know it, absolutely just get together there's a lot of uh, um, clubs that we hang out with the Demons the Rivieras uh, the Corsairs uh, Los Muertos literally uh, everybody you have guys. a shirt for oh I have yeah. all you have a shirt for literally all of those clubs I mean all these guys are rad they, you know we're all good friends and uh it, it's it's fun you know everybody gets together and builds each other shit so it's it's a good time out there in houston uh so do y'all have any uh live music going on on this one hey hot rod hillbillies they're really? coming out hot rod hillbillies nice. are playing yeah uh shame on me with the good friends of ours uh they always come out if you guys haven't heard shame on me two of the most amazing female vocalists you will ever hear anywhere they're they will blow the doors off of your car. It's crazy, but uh, yeah, we're excited to have them out. Um, it, it's it's good to see the Hot Rod Hillbillies out there, uh, just tearing up the stage. That's a so that's it, a Houston staple right there. Yeah, absolutely. We we played with those guys way back in the day when they would come to San Antonio and play shows, and yeah, that that'll be a good time. Hell for yeah! Sure. Hey, you, you gonna get back into music or what? You you guys gonna start playing again? Something He's happened? supposed to play for my birthday next year not this year um uh, yeah it, none next of them year. are gonna listen to this anyway none of them are reliable to show up and <laughs> practice <laughs> and do anything so you know if i could get reliable people right right will might listen to this but will will's fairly reliable and probably one of the best You're bass players about him that's why uh yeah uh he's probably one of the best bass players that ever touched an upright bass but uh yeah if uh if we could practice if we could uh set aside time to actually uh create because played the same 15 songs for eight years straight and then uh we came back and i played the same 15 songs for you know a few more shows if and it it's works like, it works right uh, we had fun and <laughs> i was literally about to say i'm like but they were the best 15 <laughs> songs you played nobody shuts up about them yeah no we had a good time I, and i i definitely don't i never say i won't get back into it but there there's stipulations to it. it's like now now that i'm gonna be 40 <laughs> no uh <laughs> You're not going to be able to see the set list? Is that yeah, what I can't say? see what's going on. Uh, yeah, you're so tall, you can't even see your shoes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your eyes are going to go back. You need to see glasses. But I got to you know, I gotta make sure that there's got to be some kind of uh, reliability when it comes down to it. But... Is that the five-minute warning? Mm-hmm. All right. I was gonna not say. at all. Okay, she's coming back. Shh. Huh? What happened? Talk about your toddler bladder. Hell Yeah. I'm a grown man hey, with the bladder of a five-year-old You guys girl. do know that he used to be in a band, right? No. <laughs> what? What? Huh? Yeah. He was a drummer. You were a drummer. You know how to pound the skins, girl. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, you need a drummer. There you go. There we go. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. Y'all heard it here. We're, we're back. <laughs> with the madman Matt Lane and the toddler Scully. <laughs> <laughs> You found, found a drummer. We found a drummer. So Blood Moon Hallers will start up next week. <laughs> we have a uh, we'll be playing rally gig rally every Wednesday. March second. <laughs> <laughs> right? Can you imagine? We just showed up at Rally in the Alley and played a secret set. No, that's not happening, folks. We got a bass right there and a nice guitar. <laughs> this has really been in the works for five years. <laughs> we, we He's got been secretly got learning together. everything yeah. as we go. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been creeping on you this entire time and now here. Yeah. Oh, you mean musically? <laughs> yes. Damn it. Definitely not sexually, but musically, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Shit, you'd need fucking stilts if you needed sexually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just because I'm four foot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> that broke Crickets, everybody. Cricket, the record skipped. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. I feel like I'm your neighbor looking in your window at you when you're completely <laughs> naked drinking coffee in the morning. You want me to stir yeah. that coffee? I'm that, I'm that old lady next door right now. Fucking <laughs> 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 Sam, if you didn't know Sam was bright red right now, she is. I'm hot. Like, my face oh, yeah, is hot. It's hot, in, it's here, hot guys. in here. Like, I'm dying. So he stirs your coffee up, then. Uh, hey. All right. Fucking, I would, but she don't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. I'm still on, I'm still young, so I don't drink coffee or energy drinks. Yeah, she, she doesn't need Tea? them. Nothing? Like, what no. do you drink in the morning? How do you get up and go to work? I just get up and go. I don't drink anything in the morning. What's wrong with you? He gets mad at me because I don't eat all day. And he's like, you haven't eaten? I was like, yeah, it's like 2 o'clock and I haven't eaten yet. I'm fine. It's fine. It's like, I haven't eaten. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have a bowl of Fruit Loops. What the <laughs> fuck? That's not a meal. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a cheese. That's fine. But yeah, no, I don't drink energy <laughs> drinks and I don't drink uh, coffee. I've never had either. Well, I've had energy drinks and that was shit. And I was like, no, it's okay. I don't Weird drink. Never, never even had it? No. Like, not that's not a habit. You just <laughs> don't even have it? No. Good Lord, sweet Jesus. I've never even tried it, like, at all. I, it smells great. I just, I'm like, no, I don't need it. Oh, my God. I already it, annoy him enough in the morning. I don't the need shit to be bouncing I drink off. doesn't smell great at all. I'm it's like, like <laughs> motor oil. <laughs> like, I don't need sugar. to be bouncing off the walls. So, I'm like, no, I'm good. I was going to say, aliens do exist. I, uh, how, I don't know a single person that doesn't drink coffee. I don't drink it at all. That's why, he, that's why he has to have mandates with his friend, with his best friend Abe, because they'll go have, try coffees together. I'm like, I don't want that shit. You go, All hipster. Yeah, I'm like, y'all go have that. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll have flights. Flight, <laughs> they have flights. Flights, flights of, coffee. of coffee. Not even lying. Not even lying. There's a spot that we go to is like, here, here's a flight of coffee, and it's fucking delicious. But uh, on a daily wait, thing. Wait, wait, wait. Explain how this goes. It, because a flight of coffee is like, you, you smell it, you swish it around in the cup, right? Like, you yeah, describe you know, it. You describe how it feels on the scrotum. Uh, you get yeah. a palate cleanser. You get the palate cleanser in between each one. So you, you give each one its fair share, you know? What do you uh, use as a palate cleanser? Whiskey? Whiskey, absolutely. It's the only thing that will get rid of a coffee flavor. Yeah. But no, that's uh, uh, once in a while we'll go and hit up some, some of the different, like, uh, hipster coffee places. But... On a daily basis, it's fucking motor oil laced with sugar. Like, that's just there you go. You know, in the shop, it's like this is what poured out of the pot. That's you, that's what you get. It might have been there since yesterday. Completely burnt. I mean, yeah. if you haven't it's noticed, there's, the bottom. there's not a coffee pot in here or a Keurig or nothing. Because I we had one, and I was like, we're just waste. This is just a waste of space. You're the only one who drinks coffee. I don't it was want wasting it. Wasting counter so space. So I threw it away. Beautiful <laughs> kitchen. Wait, so, wait, wait. You said he's the only one that drinks it, so you got to get rid of it? Yeah. I was just, it just took up space. I'm like, you can just pick up shit on the way to work. Why do yeah. I need to have that it That means in since my you don't kitchen? want it, <laughs> since you don't want it, he's like, you got to get rid of it? Yep. I, I, like how you, I like how you caught on to this. <laughs> Fuck me, right? There we go. See, you, I need to come over more often, right? <laughs> yeah. You wanted a yeah, young Lane, wife. You're, you're not insane. This is really happening. <laughs> yeah. No, I took the curing to work because that's where it got the most use. Yeah. I was like, either take broke. it or I throw it away. <laughs> you can drink coffee in peace. Uh, to be fair, I bought like the fancy fucking Keurig and the little thing that spins that has all the different coffees and all this other shit. And I'm like, you're not drinking it fast enough. It's just taking too much room. I don't want it. So take it to work. So yeah. Yeah. He took it to work. And now he has it at work. And everybody uses it and loves it, apparently. They think I'm the greatest thing ever. They're like, oh, she's so sweet for buying that for you. I'm like, no, I just didn't want it in the house. Yeah. <laughs> She bought it for y'all. She's Apparently. amazing for kicking everything out that you love. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm glad she liked the dog. <laughs> I bought him. <laughs> yeah, you bought that Keurig, too. It's contest. <laughs> Weird flex. <laughs> oh, well. Well, folks, we will quit droning through your car stereo speakers or your airpods or whatever you're listening to this podcast on uh hopefully if you were driving you weren't trying to watch the youtube video that this is uh because there wasn't a video no i'm not video worthy no Trust absolutely me. not we all have i don't like fucking youtube at all i don't see the point of it everyone's been asking us for years to do it i'm like that's fucking stupid i don't want to do it <laughs> thanks guys <laughs> uh, but this will be on OnlyFans. 
Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We have a face for OnlyFans. <laughs> if it was a podcast. Ah. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, we appreciate y'all listening to this, and we have nothing to fucking promote other than Scully and the Rumble Cat show coming up in March, March 2nd. March, March 2nd. 2nd. Rally, Rally in the Alley at Back Pew Brewery. And uh, other than that, we don't have any sponsors, and we're not promoting anything, and we're not selling you anything. So, in all things custom, keep it cool. Bye.